Whiskey friends far and wide, we are live. Happy Tasty Tuesday, y'all. I'm Eric, your humble malt muser. Three hours of whiskey talk. Y'all know the drill. What's happening? It's been a hell of a 2021 so far, hey, y'all. <laughs> we don't need to get into all that. Let's, uh, let's actually do the opposite and talk about whiskey instead. I'll set things up, let everything, uh, let everybody know what we are doing for this next three hours and a few minutes, but let me say hi to some of the early birds as we always do. Tamika Ivy in Chicago, first in the door. I'm first, yeah, well, there you go. What's up, Tamika? How are you? Thanks for stopping through. Nipping at your heels is another Midwesterner. French, no drinks tonight. We're tuning in to chatting with the fine people. There you go, French. Good to see you as always, bud. Daniel, snow melting in East Texas. <laughs> French says the snow never melts in Duluth. Ben, how are things in Canada? Good to see you. You're here early. Doesn't melt where Ben is either. <laughs> yeah, right. I uh, I can't imagine that there's much in the way of a reprieve from snow up in Calgary these days. Andrew Page. Yeah, it does seem like a year, right? Man. It's just craziness everywhere, my friend. Crazy to say the least. Yeah, Jack Pickletown. What's up? Salancha. Happy Tuesday. Molasses. What's up? Peter White. Juan, whole crew in. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody can uh, enjoy a dram or two tonight. Lord knows we need it. Let me set things up. So, uh, happy hour tonight. I'm going to be having a few sips of Glendalock. This is an Irish whiskey, a single malt Irish whiskey, but it's finished in uh, Japanese Mizunara oak. I finally got my hands on one of these. It's been on the bucket list for a long time. I finally pulled the trigger. And uh, from the one or two sips I had when I first got it, it does not disappoint. So we're gonna check that out. I'm also gonna uh, go into the mystery box here and pull up a random sample. And uh, we'll, whatever it is, we'll uh, give a sip of that too. So we'll hang out, we'll get into all that. Uh, tonight, uh, nine o'clock, geez, nine o'clock Eastern time, Telex and Malt Tasty Tuesday show. We are doing uh, three tastings tonight, all from the Glenmorangie Distillery. We're going to be doing um, Kayla Cake, the small batch um, reserve or whatever, 12-year-old um, uh, Malaga cask finish. And then in the second hour, we will be doing the uh, uh, Glen Morangy 18. So all things Glen Morangy should be a lot of fun. Um, let me know in the chat if any of y'all have had this uh, Glendalock or really any of those Glen Morangies for that matter, because uh, we're going to get into those. It should be a lot of fun. In the meantime, looks like Cohen's in the house. How are things in Southern California, my friend? Yeah. You've had this one before? Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm definitely impressed. But it's been a while since I've actually had, uh, I think I sampled it maybe two weeks ago. So I'm eager to get back into it. I only had one one taste. Mizunara cask is too expensive in Canada. You've seen this one up in, uh, in um, Ontario? It's, it's not cheap here, too. It was hovering all uh, right around the, um, I want to say, it's always between like 90 and 100. I actually found it for 78, which was the cheapest I'd ever seen it. And so had to pull the trigger on that one. You know, I have, I, there's those bottles that I just never, I never actually go ahead and buy, you know, but they're always kind of on the list. And if I'm putting a list together, they're the first one I put back on the shelf. So I'm trying to uh, to actually get some of those that I, I tend to leave behind when I'm doing my shopping. 
This is one of them. Uh, the other one is the Balvenie 15 Sherry Oak, or Balvenie 15 Sherry, uh, the, the, the first fill Sherry single barrel. That's another one that I just seem to leave sitting behind all the time. And so I'm thinking, uh, had to just pull the trigger. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm excited to share this one with you. And yeah, if, if anybody else has had this, it looks like Daniel's had his hand on it already, which is rad. Um, let me know in the chat. Uh, one sec. What is going on here? All right. Okay. What's going on? 170 Canadian for that one. Wow. Damn. That's that's expensive. Silverlock. How's it going? Happy Tuesday. Hope all is well in Chicago land. Excited to see the Glenn Moore team with y'all. I really like it too. It's been a long time since I had it. It was one of the first 18 year old whiskeys I think I ever bought. Um, that was man years ago. So I'm excited to uh, to taste it again. Telex Telex picked up a bottle of it. Should be a lot of fun. Cohen saying Malaga will win out of the three. I probably don't disagree with you. Um, it's going to be interesting against the 18. I, I do think it's going to beat out the cake. Uh, I did do a review. Actually, the, the cake review I did. I've reviewed all three of these, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, but I did the Malaga one like two months ago. I was a huge fan of that. That's an incredibly good bottle. Glendalock at Christmas. Very delicious. Oh, right on, right on. Good stuff. Been a while since he's poured the Glenmo 18 for sure. Andrew, how are you, buddy? Almost bought the Malaga yesterday at Total Wine for now. You decided to wait, looking forward to you to revisit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really don't think you can go wrong with that one. I've I've be, I've come uh, across info that apparently it's only available at Total Wine. I'm not sure why that's the case, but um I have not seen it anywhere else. And when I picked it up, I was in Los Angeles, and uh, they had it at a total wine there. And that's about the right price for it, too. So, yeah, consider it. We'll uh, we'll do the deep dive. I'm really curious to see what Talix is going to think of this. Something tells me that he's going to be uh, he's going to be a big fan of this one because he loves the Malaga cask, and I think it's a four year finish on that, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have the bottle anymore, but man, killer pour. So yeah, looking forward to it, bud. Yep. Yeah, 80 is a good price for sure, for sure. 100 bucks for the Mizanara down by you. Balvany is an expensive joke in all of Canada except Alberta. Yeah, yeah. Who uh we were talking about that a couple of weeks ago. That was one of those that like for some reason it's stupidly expensive everywhere except for Alberta up in Canada. It's 170 no Glen Delac available at my total wine. Oh, oh, I was actually talking about the Glen Morangy Malaga cask. Um, I've actually not seen the Glen Delac Mizanara at a total wine, at least anywhere near me. I wish Glenmo would put an age statement on the Malaga. It is. It's twelve. Yeah, the 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 uh, Malaga cask is a twelve year old. It's forty seven point two percent ABV, non shell filtered, and I think it's four years. A uh, four-year finish in first fill uh, Malaga, right? <laughs> it's part of some series they're putting out called like, I think it's called like, just like the Small Batch Reserve or something like that. Um, and uh, I was a huge fan of it. Um, if you recall, a couple months back, I was singing that thing's praises when I was sipping it on um, a couple live shows. So that was a good bottle for sure. And I'm looking forward to getting my hands on uh, another one if I can if I can find it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did post a review of it, but yeah, I think, let me just take a, a look. Yeah, I like the fact that they put the age statement on it. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it seems to only be a total wine. 12 years old. It is four years in first film Malaga, um, which is basically like Oloroso PX kind of mix, I guess. Um yeah, 47.3% and non-chill filtered. I mean, checking all the boxes. I wish Glenmorangie would do that with all its pores. 
<laughs> that would be fantastic. At least just up in the ABV or, uh, you know, go in the non-chill filtered routes. Some of them are, uh, the, the cake is, for example. But, you know, not the, uh, not the stuff lower in the range. Nestor, what's up? What's Frank the Mysterious Cactus' favorite for? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, yeah. Uh, so Frank the Mysterious Cactus is uh, is that cactus right there. Uh, I posted something about it on Instagram, or, and uh, I think Nestor must have seen that a couple of weeks back. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, I haven't asked Frank what, is, what, uh, what its favorite pour is, but probably whatever I put near it. <laughs> too funny man <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to consult frank later and see see what's going on alberta has private liquor stores no government monopoly there oh that's a fantastic price that's a great that's a great bottle the 13 and the uh the 13 and the 14 um are both really good out of that hazel burn. That's awesome that you were able to get a handle on that. <laughs> yeah, he drank the bookers for sure. I mean, I don't know, man. Frank's a strange, strange cactus, so up to weird shit all the time. <laughs> Mike, how you doing, man? Mike and I were chatting earlier. Uh, I just uh, pulled the trigger on the new Compass Box Hedonism uh, Felicitas, Felicitas, uh, which is like the 20th anniversary compass box release it's a 53 percent hedonism release that uh and i think it's got some different barrelings on it um they put it in like a first fill bourbon basically to commemorate 20 years since the original hedonism came out really stoked about getting that and mike actually if you guys haven't uh, seen it did a uh did a review of that on his channel a couple weeks ago if i'm not mistaken check that out yeah the quint right the Quinta, the Quinta's 46 and non, no color and no chill filter too. Okay. So the Lasanta isn't though, and neither is the 10. And I know the Nectar door, they took the age statement off it or whatever, but um, yeah, they're kind of all over the board. Mm. Yeah. Oh, damn. So you can get stuff shipped to you from Alberta. Is that how it works? Or are you getting it? in your, uh, in your province. All right. I'm not going to bury the lead much longer. We'll get into the, uh, sample mystery box in just a couple minutes, but first things first, gotta get into this, this, this whiskey, hot damn. So it's an Irish whiskey. The, the juice itself is actually from Cooley, which I think actually somebody mentioned already. Um, so Glendalock isn't actually using their own distillate or anything like that. However, um, it is finished for some period of amount of time in Mizanar oak, which is the Japanese oak, incredibly uh, expensive stuff to use, which is why anything usually with Mizanara has got a, a high price. It's a really porous wood, gives you all sorts of kind of interesting spice notes that you really don't get anywhere else. And it takes like, apparently up to like 500 years for one of these trees to actually grow enough where you're going to get enough quality wood out of it. And the wood's actually going to be at its full maturation. So uh, Mizanara is super expensive um, and uh, not something you're going to find a lot of whiskeys aged in, let alone fit or finished in, let alone aged in. However, this Glendalock 13 Comes in at 46%. Yeah, it's 13 years in American bourbon. And then it's finished in Mizanar Oak. So it's probably only for a couple months. Um, not a whole lot else on here. Yeah, 46% is fantastic. Let's get some of this in the glass. As I said, I had like one sip of uh, one, one dram of this already um, a while ago. And I was really impressed. This one I can already see hopping in that uh, contention for a top five whiskey of 2021 already. And it's only freaking January. Uh, yeah, not much else here on the back. They got some tasting notes. Yeah, so I don't know. It's probably not natural color and maybe chill filtered. 
Who can really say? It doesn't say on there, so we can assume it. Here's the color, though. Let me just use this napkin here. Looks probably like fake color to me. Anyway, so let me know if you any of you have uh, any you know thoughts on Mizanara, any of the any whiskeys that you really really enjoy, uh, what it brings to the juice. Um, I'm always trying to try new stuff, so interested in recommendations. What I tend to notice is it gives you this kind of like it's it's like a nutmeg, incense, sandalwood type spice. It's really really unique. And quite frankly, a lot of Japanese whiskey is not actually even aged in Mizunara. Um, it, it's really kind of like a, you know, they'll put something out, you know, some of the distilleries over there will put something out with, you know, a Mizunara finish maybe, but you really don't find it. A lot of their whiskeys using it again, because it is so damn expensive and really, really hard to come by. So the fact that Glendalock has uh, Mizunara barrels sitting around is, is pretty impressive. They also apparently have a 17 year old of this, but I couldn't find it anywhere and it looked like it was really expensive. Anyways, nose. It's like nothing. I mean, it, it's it's a completely different experience than, than you get off almost any whiskey. The Mizanara notes are really, really strong on this. Again, it smells like sandalwood, gingerbread, like light gingerbread, almost like there's almost like a cinnamon sugar pastry thing going on. Just a little bit of fruit notes behind it, apple, apricot, but that it's it's so unmistakable on the nose. It almost smells like somebody was burning some type of like uh, I don't know, just some type you know incense or something like that. There's nothing quite like it. It also smells a little bit like if you've ever walked into a really old church, specifically one made out of like stone. Um, or, or walked into kind of a damp or like a, a cellar that's not finished, that's made out like just concrete and stone, that kind of just like minerality, dampness, mustiness. You, could, you get that on here too. It's almost like a slightly metallic even, but in, in a really, really good way. Yeah, this nose is crazy. But beneath it, I mean, it's it's really balanced well. Like beneath it, you are getting those bourbon notes. You're getting some of that kind of nice, and this is not pot still, if I'm not mistaken, it is not. You're not getting a lot of those kind of unmalted barley notes in this, but really fantastic nose on this. Man. <laughs> that is so good. Spicy rich a little bit of like apple citrus caramel toffee vanilla and then again all this spice it's like cinnamon uh dried cinnamon well all cinnamon's dry you know what i'm talking about like uh, uh powdered cinnamon nutmeg all spice but all really light and again this kind of sandalwood it's so hard to even describe one of the most unique whiskeys I think I've ever had. It's absolutely fantastic. I would I would encourage folks to grab this without hesitation. It's it's just it's just delicious. Nice kind of medium long finish too. It's holding on. It's almost like uh, yeah, like a cinnamon roll. Texture wise, though, yeah, Silver Luck just mentioned this. It is a bit grainy. And not in a bad way. I'm just really hard pressed to think of anything, any whiskey I can compare this to. It's just, it's incredibly unique. And it works really well with this triple distilled Irish style. It allows this Mizanara to really shine, I think. Whew. Yeah, wow. Killer, killer pour. Oh, look out. Andrew Page got his hands on uh, the Anok 24. That was my whiskey of the year. This is your first time having it, or have you had it before? If it's your first time, congrats. That is a killer pour. Yeah. 
you got to get your hands on this one. This is, I mean, part of you wonders when you when you see something like this is if it's like, you know, they just put a finish on it and the finish kind of overpowers everything or conversely, you don't pick up much of the finish at all. And it's just kind of one of these gimmicky whiskeys. I'm thinking about the Chivas Regal Mizanara, for example, which I thought was kind of underwhelming. Not at all. This this is really this is really hitting all the marks. It's deceptively light whiskey. The flavor is really really strong, but it's pretty light on the palate. You know, maybe medium viscosity, but that might even be a stretch. Killer stuff. I mean, I'll probably do a full review of this eventually this year. But man, I mean, this there's no way this is not they're going to be lower than a four. Awesome. Oh, hell yeah, Silverlock. Cheers. Gary, Gary's got the 17. My man, really? Did you find that in the States? I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I can't even imagine. This 13 is so good. I can't imagine what that 17's got to be like. I have to figure out a way to get that at one of these days. Hey, what's going on? Can you please share the link? Which store you got that from? Craft Sellers was sold out today. Vassal, cheers, man. Thanks for swinging through. Good to see you. Happy Tasty Tuesday. All right, folks talking about... Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be why this is costing... I mean, this is, like I said, this is a 13-year-old, but I mean, in the States, you're looking at... You're not going to find this cheaper than like 80, 85 bucks unless you you know, run across a sale or something. Not a cheap whiskey. But, man, if you want to change the pace. You ever had Cinnamon Toast Crunch, <laughs> that that cereal? It's like, man, you pick that note up in this. It's fucking awesome. Yep, definitely. Yeah, you nailed it. herbaceous yeah you know that's interesting i'm gonna put a little bit of water on it i kind of picked that up a bit in the background but not 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 enough but i kind of see what you're saying it's like basil or something like that something kind of just sweet and sharp yeah yeah i would you won't be disappointed having this on your shelf Nice. I've never had anything from West Cork. I, I, I've I increasingly been getting really interested in Irish. Um, this year, I'm going to, in March, for like St. Paddy's Day or whatever, I'm going to do all Irish reviews. I'm going to do the Red Breast 21, Red Spot 15. Uh, I have a Napogue Castle 14, which is quite good. I might do this one. Um, I just got this. Uh, it's a Bordeaux Red Wine Finished Green Spot. I might check that out. Um, I got a bunch of Irishes that I've just been eager to uh, really sit down with, and I've I've quite enjoyed it. I mean, the Red Spot or the uh, the Red Breast Twelve Cast Strength, I think, is still one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. Um, it's it's absolute killer, especially if you can get some of the like older bottles, which you still see on the shelves, and like um, you know ones that were released like two years ago. Those were killer. Uh, the new one is really good. Um, it's not. I think they do a batch or two every year. Uh, the, but yeah, it's not quite to the level, but it, you know, I mean, we're, we're splitting hairs really. Oh, geez. They do a 25 too. God. So Silverlock was mentioning that they were picking up herbaceous notes with the addition of water. I totally am seeing it now. It's like uh bitter, bitter parsley or something. There's also something else in this that I can't quite put my finger on. It's kind of, I don't know what that is. First time with the 24. I've only had a knock 12 and cutter. Oh, man. <laughs> Enjoy that, buddy. That's going to be a killer, killer drink. Of course, K Kano and High Times have it. <laughs> what don't they have? <laughs> 
man, you know what I'm getting of this? Like mushroom. There's like a mushroom note. Like behind some of this spice, clove, heavy clove with water. Water has totally changed the nose on this. The whole like how, mizen, how the Mizanaro was so much for, forward, it's like, it's changed a bit. This is even more dynamic, I think, with water. Simply killer. Awesome stuff. Try and locate the Irishman 17 Sherry cast strength. Not sure if I've heard of that one. Let's see what, let's see what we got. Yeah, folks, if anybody has a, a recommendations on, on any Irish whiskeys, let me know. Or if you're looking for recommendations, I definitely have a few. Uh, here it is. This is the one that... Uh, Peter White was just talking about. Is this in the States? Uh, only overseas. 120, 130 bucks though. So definitely not too expensive. They have a, it's like a single cask. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You said 250. 250 is a bit heavy. Yeah, uh, I have one of them. It's the it's the Barton one. The I don't remember which what it's called. That's the one I got. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I like regular green spot quite a bit too. I think honestly between the three spots, I, I have I've not had the blue spot either, but I think yellow spot is my favorite. I actually like the yellow spot, which is the twelve year um, in the that's in the Malaga casks. I'm not mistaken, or it's Marsala. Um, I actually like that more than the than the 15. Not by much, but it's also like 40 bucks cheaper. So, yeah, one of these days, I've seen some of those and the Dream casks and stuff that have come out. I have the 21, uh, which is. That's that's probably as high as I'm going to be able to go with <laughs> with the red spot line. Uh, those those twenty sevens and the dream casks and the twenty eights and they're like you know up in that five hundred dollar range. I'd love to try them, but uh, yeah, probably not going to be able to make that steep of an investment. This was like two. I think I got it for like two twenty, which surprisingly reasonable given um, at the time it was the oldest one. I think this is from. A year and a half ago, two years ago. Yep, that's the that's the green spot one I got. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna do an uncorking of that pretty soon. All right, y'all. So, um, let me just recap. I'm sitting here gushing about the Glendalock 13 Mizanara, killer bottle, killer killer. Um, next. I'm going to go into this box here and pull out a random sample and uh, we'll, we'll load this bad boy up. What are we going to have here? All right. We got Kilhoman USA Batch 3 Port Bourbon Sherry, 48.9%. I'm thinking this might be a Daniel sample, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Well, we'll check that out. The mystery box. There's more samples in there that I know what to do with sometimes. I'm going to peep that out. Um, and then, of course, at 9 o'clock, y'all, uh, Telex and I will do Tasty Tuesday Telex and Malt Show. We are doing a uh, three tastings tonight, all from the Glen Morangy Distillery. We will be doing the 12-year-old um, Malaga cask finish, uh, which is part of the new, like, small batch reserve, small batch release series that they're doing. Fantastic stuff. Um, we're also going to do the tail of cake because Telex needs to have the cake. And we're going to be doing the Glenmore G18. So, want to learn about Glenmore G? Or have a good Glenmore G you want to uh, sip on while we chat about it? Join us. It'll be a good time. We'll have another, it'll be a full two hour show as always. So, plenty of time to, uh, to uh, chat about Glenmore G, that's for sure. Which is one of my favorite distilleries. Hmm. I'll tell you, it's really hard to put this down. 
Yep. I've never had one. I wish I could, but I, yeah, they're quite pricey. No doubt. It is a Daniel sample. I thought so. I, I can recognize the handwriting. I thought it was you or potentially food quig. Speaking of Irish whiskeys, uh, Food Quig's whiskey of the year was in Irish. It was the Red Breast um, 15, which I've actually not had. Um, but after I watched his review where he was basically like wetting himself how great it was, I might have to make the investment in that 15. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. The only time I've really ever went above a hundred for Irish was the Reds, the Red Breast Twenty One, and this uh, Red Spot Fifteen, which was like I got it a really good deal. It was like one hundred eighteen, which is stupid considering that it's basically one hundred fifty everywhere now. So, you know, sometimes you just got to jump on things when you get the opportunity, right? So I'm glad I did that. Really enjoyed that Kill Home and Small Batch Three. Wish I had some of it. I've actually never had any of that. Those USA, these USA batches. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. Yeah, man, Gary, you hit the nail on the head. I'm uh, like, <laughs> I'm on my second, you know, maybe like half dram of this, and, and I'm just like, you just don't want to put it down. It's fantastic. Really, really dangerously sippable for something as kind of spicy and complex as this. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be surprised if this doesn't make my top five. I'm really interested, though, because I have a feeling with oxygen, this is going to open up even more and get really interesting. Add on to whatever what's already super interesting about it. So it should be fun. Um, for those looking for like cheap Irish... Irish whiskeys that uh, if you're looking to just get into Irish, I definitely have a couple I'd recommend. Um, for right in that like $50 range, which I think is kind of where you want to be, you know, green spot for sure. That's the pot still. So you get the malted and unmalted barley flavor. It's very green um, flavor in terms of kind of the the, the grain in it. It's, it's awesome. Um, I would also recommend uh, Red, uh, Red Breast 12. I would recommend um, the Pogue Castle's 12-year-old in the bourbon cask. That was really, really good. Um, what is that? Uh, right around 50 or less, there's... It's not West Cork. It's... Um, damn. I'm going to have to try to remember. Powers. Um, there's a powers. I saw somebody just mentioned the John. Yeah. The John's lane is great. That's usually in that like 60 to 70 range. There was one kind of in the middle that I thought was, was uh, pretty delicious too. Oh, um, I would, I would also say just like, look at, um, some of the different Jameson releases, especially some of their, um, what are those called? Like the distillers. What is this thing? The, the Whiskey Maker series. So this is the Cooper's Crows. This is right around like 55, 60. It's basically, um, this one's got the fit, got uh, the maturation in both ex-bourbon and in, I think this is uh, sherry casks. This is a really good one. 43% non-show filtered. You know, go about, go outside of some of the, uh, you know, just like the regular Jameson or Tullamore Dew or you know, Clontarf, whatever, um, you know, spend a little bit more and you're going to get a lot more for your money. I think at least that's been my experience so far. Yeah. Powers John's lane is fantastic. Hmm. Man, Gary, you said it, that is dangerous. You know, Daniel Rance, of course, Irish Yoda. Your Mizanar is one of his favorite Irishes. Oh, really? <laughs> well, he definitely knows what's up because, I mean, obviously this is like a really hybrid type Irish, right? I mean, a Mizanar, like the Mizanar on this, I think it just has so much influence. I'm going to be curious to see if it tames down a little bit. 
with oxygen and and a little bit more of that kind of Irish distillate comes through. But I do feel like you you can still pick it up a bit. I mean, it's definitely not like your quote unquote classic Irish whiskey in any like flavor in the flavor profile, but yo, it's just killer. There's not that much else I can say about it. Great stuff. Stephen Connor's in the house. What's up, buddy? Cheers to you in Tennessee. How are you, man? All right. A random sample. I'm going to get this thing poured in the glass. Again, thank you, Daniel, friend of the show. Appreciate your support on Patreon. This is Kill Homan USA Batch 3. It's got three different maturations. It looks like port, bourbon, and sherry, 48.9% uh, ABV. Should be interesting. And that is a healthy, healthy sample. Cheers, buddy. Wow, look at the color of this. <laughs> look at the color of this. Jesus. Man, it looks like cherry Kool-Aid. Holy shit. And this is this is natural color too, I'm assuming. Uh, what else is going on? Yeah, Tricconnell. That's 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 another one. If you're looking for just like introductory Irish, you know, something a little better than your, you know, standard Jameson off the shelf, Tricconnell's another really good one in that 40 to 50 range. That Napo Castle 12, Red Breast 12, Green Spot. Those are all great places to start if you're looking to really, really taste some some quality Irish whiskey and uh, and see if it's if it's your wheelhouse and somewhere you want to go from there. Um, there's definitely you know you can you can get expensive with Irish just like anything, but man, I think the you get a lot of bang for your buck out of those. Yeah, good call, Gary. Whiskey Ace, what's up in Pittsburgh, man? How are you? Thanks for swinging through. Port Sherry, I'm surprised. You bet, man. You bet. I was just mentioning um, I'm going to do in uh, in March. I'm going to do all Irish reviews. So what I got lined up is the Red Breast 21, the Red Spot 15, maybe this Glendalock 13 Mizanara. Um, I also have a 14 year old uh, Twinwood Napo Castle, which is killer, um, and a Jameson Cooper's Crows. So I've, I've put together a decent amount of Irish whiskeys. Um, so I'll probably do all of those in March. Just make it a whole St. Patty's thing. <laughs> Give me an excuse to drink nothing but Irish whiskey for a while. You know, I've heard of worse things. Eric Waite, love the Mizanar on his channel too. Yeah, man, a lot of praise coming in for this. I, I totally get it. Kill Homan has been doing great stuff recently. Have you had the Fino yet? Asking that Daniel. I haven't had it. Yeah. Oh, Jason Whiskey Wise. Yeah. It does look wild. Yeah. Y'all take take one more look at the color of this. This is the uh, Kill Homan USA Small Batch 3 Port Cherry and Bourbon Note. Uh, bourbon. NAS. But like, look at the color of this. <laughs> I mean, if you poured this for me and, and I couldn't smell it, I would have thought you gave me a doll more. But like I know this is probably a natural color. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite quite as intense red as this. Holy shit. Interesting. The nose is quite quite pleasant. You got the peat. It's there. It's that really clean, almost like winter green, slightly medicinal, herbaceous peat that you get from Kilhoman. Fantastic. And then it's a lot of red fruit, soft red fruits, dark red fruits. I'm assuming this is like a ruby port. It doesn't take, it's, you're not getting a lot of the dried fruit notes. So this is all probably relatively young stuff, but wow. Really, really nice nose on this. It's not overpowering with the peat smoke and the, the peat in the smoke either, but writer's tears. Yeah, another good Irish. I don't, I'm not sure if I've had, I might have had one of them. I just don't quite remember. Kill Homan is only about 80 bucks and very collectible. Yeah. 
<laughs> God. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> well, Cohen, you're going to be crying uh, in about, I don't know, what is it going to be, 96 hours when the Packers handle your Rams. I'll be sure to bring that up next week. <laughs> or hopefully you won't be doing it to me. <laughs> yeah, cranberry juice is right, man. Look at that. Damn. Yeah, the, the 14 Tawny Port. Sure. Yeah. Another one I got to get my hands on eventually. All right, let's give this a taste. Again, the nose, it's it's really much, it's it's your it's your it's sweet and it's smoky. There's a bit of spice, but for the most part, you're getting some nice bright red fruits. There's some dark stewed fruits. Getting a little bit of maybe a slight kind of like pancake, maple, maybe even just like a really milk chocolate note hiding back there. But anyways, let's give this a taste. You know, cheers. Happy Tasty Tuesday, y'all. Mm hmm. Sweet, sour. There's a really interesting sourness in this. Medium viscosity, maybe even a little bit more. It's pretty oily. Again, you know, just kind of like random red fruits. If I was going to put it, I mean, if I was going to put a name on it, it's more like raspberry. There's a bit of that kind of cloying dark chocolate or uh, black cherry. Develops pretty nice. Vanilla kind of surges in, and then it's like almost citric grape grapefruit, maybe. A little bit of chili pepper, pretty long finish, malted milk balls, ash. Wow. Hmm. This isn't bad at all. Uh, this is another one I think that's going to benefit from just a little bit of water. I'm upgrading, y'all, slowly but surely. Do like a drop or two in here just to kind of chill this out a little bit, see what else we get. It's, it's surprisingly not very aggressive. Um, I find that a lot of Kilhomans really, really are kind of dry, peppery, and acidic. This one, not as much. Mike Myers in the house. What's up, buddy? Oh. There's a lot going on in this. And it's really well, well married together. Almost so that you can't quite decipher it. Like now with the water, the bourbon notes are coming through a bit more. It's a bit more in balance. Whereas neat, it felt like the sherry was more dominant, which makes sense on the nose, I think. Or the port. Hmm. Warm baked apples, cinnamon, cinnamon, like a, a cinnamon, brown sugar, cinnamon kind of thing. Hmm. Well, you said this was about 80 bucks, Daniel? Man, there's a really nice, like, uh, almondy, kind of like almond, uh, what did they say, marzipan type thing going on in this, too. Seriously. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yo. This is no slouch. I really like this. It's a bit, again, it's a little bit muddled, neat, but I feel like with water, this has really opened up. You can really kind of pick it apart a lot more. You can really find the bourbon notes more now. Caramel, toffee, classic kind of vanilla, brown, uh, um, caramelized sugar. I had, you know, I had always overlooked these. Uh, my, my personally for me, Kilhoman is kind of a hit and miss distillery. Um, I really like some of their stuff. Some of the others, their other stuff I don't really care for. 
I like the uh, the mock your bay. I like the the Lockworm a lot. I don't really like the San Egg, and I don't really like uh, the red wine matured. Those didn't quite do it for me. Their 100% Isla is, is pretty good. Um, eventually, I'm going to have the STR cask and give that a try. But Kilhoman is just one of those distilleries that that's really been kind of not that they're inconsistent because they're really doing something kind of a, a craft approach. And, you know, as their stuff is on the market longer, they're starting to have more aged stuff. Um, but this one I think is a hit, not a miss. This is really, really good. And I, and I'm always not, I'm not a huge port fan either, but um, for some reason, the way it is working in this, it's just, it's just kind of that, dark syrupiness it's like right on the border or being too much but it's not it's kind of perfect thank you daniel this is fantastic i'm gonna have to keep my eyes out for this one this might be something i gotta buy hmm god damn all right go home I see you. Let me see what else is going on. I don't want to get too far behind as I usually do. We got Mike Myers in the house. This appetite for destruction avatar kicking ass. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> are we? Are you talking about the? Uh, you're you're drinking the Kilhoman. What are you picking up? I'd be curious. Water opens it up a bit. Super enjoyable. Here before they had a rum finish. 80 bucks. Okay. Well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Cohen. How many Rams jerseys do you own? I got to hear it. What's up, buddy? Trooper, showing up a little early, man. How are you? Thanks for stopping in, man. Oh, don't leave us in suspense. This I got to hear. What you, uh, how old was that, the long row Pino? Just <laughs> old Forester tonight. Nice. I'm a big fan of Old Forester, particularly that Whiskey Row series of theirs. Um, Man, the 1910 and the 1920 are both really good. I, uh, I have yet to open the the last one that I need to review, which is the Bottled and Bond from that series. But I don't know if you've had any of those, but I highly recommend them if you haven't, especially uh, this one. This, this, this one's no slouch. Old Forester's profile on these bottles is probably the closest to get to my ideal bourbon profile. They just, they just hit the spot for me. That and like Four Roses single barrel. Yeah, brown sugar. Yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, I think I was getting something a little bit sweeter. I don't know if I mentioned brown sugar, but I, I don't, I totally know what you mean. It was a little sweeter for me, maybe, but this is a great pour. Yeah, Macher Bay. I, I, Mocker Bay and Loch Gorm, I think, are your like are the are great places to start with Kilhoman. The Mocker Bay is really their classic, just like bourbon, ex bourbon notes or ex bourbon uh, barrel uh, maturation. Solid stuff. They have a cast strength version out now, uh, a limited one, which is killer. And then this, the the Loch Gorm is full ex sherry, which is, I think, probably probably their best of their core range bottlings, but I don't know. Some folks might have some different opinions on that. The San Egg is like a ex bourbon ex sherry. Uh, I don't particularly like it. I've only had the 2016 release, but um, I know there are a lot of people who really enjoy that one. Yeah. They really do. I mean, they put out like three or four new bottlings recently, I think. Um, there's a port, there's a, uh, there's that Fino, 
which I've seen, which is right around that hundred dollar range. I haven't pulled the trigger on that one yet, but I'm tempted. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, man, look at this, bro. <laughs> and this is probably natural color. What? Look at that. <laughs> Somebody said, I don't know who said it earlier. Uh, I think it was molasses. He said it looked like cranberry juice. Like, for real, man. It looks like uh, grenadine, <laughs> you know, like a bottle of that grenadine that you put in a mixed drink. I. I've never seen a whiskey that red that didn't come from Dalmore and what didn't have loaded with fake coloring. Yeah, so they got a Madeira cask. Damn, tons of stuff. Star Wars cask. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's kind of always, always felt. I've just, they're not my favorite distillery, but I really appreciate the craftsmanship that they have, and really like how innovative they are. And like I said, the Lockworm, I had the Lockworm 2019, which nearly cracked my top five. It was a fantastic pour. And then like, it was like a few months later, I had the red wine cask matured that a lot of folks loved. And I, I just, I didn't like it at all. I think I might've gave that a two, seven, five, three, maybe. And then um, Andrew Page, I think you sent me like that. Remember that single, the the 14 year old single cask Kilhoman I did when I was in LA and it was just like the weirdest bottle. <laughs> like didn't really, didn't really do it at all. Like they're just kind of all over the place. You're not quite sure what you're going to get with them. Um, but I think more often than not, they do. They put out stellar stuff. <laughs> yeah. Water is key. And this is just getting better and better. Yeah. 1920 is fantastic, man. It's, been a lot of right. it's like they just scraped the sides of it. <laughs> or some somebody dropped their Kool-Aid in it, man. But oh, I see where you're going. I think Rogers is gonna lead the Rams to the Super Bowl. I mean, if he doesn't. I don't want to get too into football, but I am a being a Milwaukee native. Yeah, green and gold, go Packers, all that. I'll be thinking about you, Cohen. When Rodgers throws his fifth touchdown to put them up uh, 35-7 in the third quarter, I'm going to be thinking about you. Blueberry cobbler on the smoker. Hot damn, man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. My brother, I knew you would dig it, man. I knew you would dig it. It's the best kept secret in like top shelf premium scotch, man. It really is. You just can't, you can't mess with the Enoch, the Enoch 24. And yeah, the price is stupid. It's like, uh, yeah, like 200 bucks. I guarantee you that's not going to last. I guarantee it. I don't understand how this has flown under the radar as long as it has, but yeah, this was that was my whiskey of the year for a reason, and yeah, it is absolutely killer, man, killer. One of my favorite whiskeys ever, to be honest with you. And the eighteen is also really, really good, um, which is at times right around a hundred bucks still for an eighteen-year-old whiskey these days. It's better than so many eighteens, I think, that are more expensive. It's better than it blows Glen Goyne eighteen out of the water for sure. Better than the Glen Morn G eighteen. I'm trying to think of other sherry. You know, I think it's better than the Glen, the Glen Glowing 21. It's awesome stuff. Get your hands on a knock, y'all. For too late. Yeah, that's real. I haven't been able to find it either. All right, y'all. We got Telex on the clock. Um, he's going to be ready here in just a couple minutes. Once that link comes my way, I will be um, sending it over to you guys in the chat as always. Let me just do a quick check and see if he is ready to go here. It looks like he is in just a moment. So I'm going to drop this link in the chat. Uh, it's been super great hanging out as always. Um, 
will be starting up in just a couple minutes over at the Telex show. Uh, we're going to do tasty Tuesdays, whiskey chat, all that jazz. Um, should be a lot of fun. Uh, just so everybody's aware, we're going to be doing three different tastings tonight. Um, we're going to see if we can actually do that in two hours because Telex and I tend to jabber on a lot. We are going to be doing the Glen Morangy Tale of Cake, the Glen Morangy uh, 12 year old Malaga cask finish, and the Glen Morangy 18 years old. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, it's one of my favorite distilleries, probably one of the distilleries I've had the most bottlings from. Um, it's a great change of pace from like, you know, your, your peated Ilos if you're into that. It's very, very kind of light, delicate whiskey, but I feel like it they do such a great job with their finishes. I'm thinking most of their whiskeys, I think, are really, really tasty stuff. So should be a lot of fun. Um, if you're looking to uh, learn about Glenmorangie or uh, want to pour a Glenmorangie and hang out with us, have a, have a drink while we chat Glenmo. Uh, here's that link one more time. Hop on over and join us. Um, I will catch you all over there, yeah, relatively soon. Um, it looks like he's going to be starting here any minute. So until then, uh, if I don't see any of you guys over there, stay safe, be well, um, wear a mask, don't get COVID. Uh, this week I'll be dropping my review of, which one am I dropping on Friday? Ben Romick Organic. That'll drop on Friday. Um, so you guys can check that out. And, uh, you know, we'll be back at it next Tuesday too. What, uh, what's case, dude? We put vanilla bean ice cream on that and poured melted butter. Oh, which one are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Cheers, man. Yeah. You know, before you leave, do, do pop the thumbs up, man. That'd be great. Appreciate that, Whiskey Ace. Good. Thanks for reminding me. Cheers, man. Always, man. Thank you for having Thanks for being in here. Need to go get my. Oh, yeah. Spios. One of my favorite Glen Morangies. That's the, uh, the, rye, the rye finished one, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely good stuff, man. All right, y'all. Brief intermission. We'll be starting up in just a minute over with Telex, man. Uh, stay safe. Be well, man. Peace, everybody.